I never re really, I never really didn't believe, but I just kind of was doing my own thing. Um, and so there came a point where one Christmas I was looking for um, something to do for my family for Christmas because I didn't have much money. And um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to fly through this because I know we're a little limited on time, but um, I was trying to find something uh, really neat to get them for Christmas because I didn't have any money and I thought I'd be trying to be creative, you know. So I thought, okay, I'll make a CD for them. I hadn't sang for a while and I thought, you know, they might enjoy, you know, some of the old songs I used to sing and all that kind of thing. And um, so I got the help of uh, my pastor. You know, we just recorded about six, seven songs from the church, and uh, you know, nothing real, you know, elaborate. You know, just uh, six or seven songs, and I had a friend help me make a CD uh, case for it. Tried to make it look good, and I was really excited about giving it to him. I put it in a little basket with Hershey's hugs and kisses and stuff, and you know, was really excited to give it to him. And then um, they got it. And they weren't as excited as I was. <laughs> and you know, there were some things that um, were said about it. Um, that really hurt my feelings. And you know, things that come out of your mouth are very powerful. Things that you say about people can make or break. Them. And um, this kind of broke me. So one day I was home from work and I got me a big cup of coffee. And I sat down and I thought, well, I'm gonna listen to this thing. And I'm gonna try to listen objectively, and, you know, as if it wasn't me singing. And um, I sat down and I listened to it. And all those words kept coming back. And before I was even through it, I was sitting there thinking, man, I suck. This is, <laughs> this is awful. You know, I said, who told me I could sing in the first place? You know, where did I get that idea? You know, I'm sorry, I'm going to have a break. Uh. And I'm kind of tied to the floor over here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a dog on a leech. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sitting this here so it's closer. Um, so, yeah, so I, the devil crept in crept in right there and, you know, began to steal my dream. And he did. Because I vowed that day, sitting in my living room, listening to this thing, that I would never sing again. And I didn't. Except for occasional karaoke here and there that, you know, I had to be coerced or tricked into doing. And I said, I'm done. Never again. And so, I was satisfied with that, you know. People had asked, you know, would you sing? Oh, sorry, I'm done with that. So shoot forward about 10 years, I started going through this depression. And how many of you know the, the spirit of depression is a real thing? And it'll eat you alive if you let it. And you know, a lot of us get sad from time to time. And all of us, uh, you know, we get over it, go on. But this was something that I couldn't shake. I mean, weeks had passed. And I was totally not me, did not want to be around anybody. Just totally cried over nothing. Just nothing. And um, I would get upset and I would eat. And then I would cry because I ate because I felt like I was fat. <laughs> my sister said, my sister said, I'm sure you're not going to do the change. <laughs> 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 So um, it was just like something I could not shake. I get to work, couldn't stay because I would be so, you know, so distraught I couldn't stay at work. And um, during this time, it got so bad that I was crying myself to sleep every night. And I would lay there and I would think about that bottle of pain pills that was in the medicine cabinet. And I thought how easy it would be just to take them and never wake up in the morning. So I wouldn't have to hurt like I did today. And um, see, that's another thing. The devil's trying to make it, you know, 
where I couldn't be here today. And obviously I didn't take them. And uh, so uh, I had posted something on Facebook at that time that said, um, the light of my life has somehow dimmed. I wish I could find a way to make it shine again. And you know, I was a broken mess. Just totally broken. And um, it had been on Facebook for, you know, several days and stuff. And the, one of the days that I got to work and couldn't stay, and I cried all the way home, and I get home and I call my sister. She was like one of the few people that knew that I was going through this. And um, she was like, Jimmy, you've got to pray. And I said, I can't. I said, the only thing that comes out of my mouth is, God, what's wrong with you? I did not know how to get through this. Could not shake it. And um, so I went to bed that day, tried to pray, cried myself to sleep again. And I get up, and I get back on uh, the computer, get on Facebook. And there's a response to that post. Now, that post has been on there for several days. And this was from somebody that I hadn't spoke to in a long time. It was Alan Jones. And he said, maybe what you need is to come do some special music at the beginnings. Well, I laughed at it. <laughs> I totally laughed at it. And uh, I think I even responded and told you that I wasn't singing anymore and I didn't do it. And I wouldn't, you know. Thanks, but I'm not going to do that. And um, a friend of mine had come over that night or the um, night after, and I told him, you know, what was going on and told him about, you know, what Alan had said. And he said, Jimmy, he said, you have a talent that you're not using. And I said, but look at me. I said, I'm a broken mess. I said, do you honestly think God could use me like this? And he said, you know, he said, I've always heard that he puts some of his most precious gifts in broken vessels because they're the ones that spill out on him. Well, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And when he left, I sat and bawled. The next morning, I got up, was going out to my parents' house. Those words kept coming to me, you know, about him putting his precious gifts in broken vessels. And I cried all the way out there. And uh, so I thought, OK, God, what, what's going on here? Why, you know, why is this bothering me so much? Well, on Facebook again, my pastor, whom I had not talked to in a while because I was kind of hitting this in church at the time. And um, he pops up and says, like, hey, what's going on? And I said, okay, this is really weird. You know, all these people from, you know, that I haven't talked to are coming, you know, saying, what's going on? And um, I told him, I said, well, I feel like God's uh, doing some slapping around right now. And he said, well, can I help? He said, slap you around, that is. <laughs> you know, that's a pastor for you. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, I told him, I said, you know, I said, I'm thinking about that I need to be seen. And he said, well, yeah. He said, you should. He said, uh, because you have to understand, my pastor, uh, back when I was in eighth grade, starting in, you know, discovering music and stuff. He was my youth pastor back then, and he was a big encouragement for me to uh, get into music. And, um, so anyway, um, my sister had sent me um, a message with a scripture. She said, I got a scripture for you. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. And it's Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm sure a lot of you know it. It says, uh, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Well, at that point, I saw no future. And don't you know, I decided, okay, God, you know, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I went back to church, and um, actually I went and visited a church. And uh, I get there, and we're standing up there in praise and worship, and I look down, and the lady in front of me, her
her Bible cover had that scripture on it. And I said, okay. Well then, I go to my church the next Sunday and the pastor used it in his sermon. And I said, okay, God, I get it. <laughs> See, he knows I'm a little slow sometimes. And so he's got to reiterate things with me. And I said, okay, God, I get it. And so um, I said, as broken as I am, I said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I said, you know, you open the doors and I'll walk through them. And so I started back, you know, church on a regular basis. And I um, told God that, you know, I'm going to do this thing if you'll, if you'll do it. If you'll, you know, open the doors. And um, so that's why I'm here. That's why I'm back, because I'm, I'm obeying the will of God. And you know, I used to say this years ago, and I denied it the whole time that I wasn't singing. You know, you want to be happy, find out what the will of God is for your life. Amen. Find out what that calling is. Because once you're in the perfect will of God, you're going to be happy. Amen. And this is where I'm the happiest right now. And uh, I think if there's a song that uh, best uh, describes me or is me during all this time is this next one. And um, I just love the words. It was written by Margaret Becker. And um, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead.
I just noticed the song um, up here. What a friend we have in Jesus. You don't get any better. You're never going to find a better friend. I'll tell you what, through my um, darkness and through my um, loneliness, he was always there. Many of you know that no matter what you're going through, nothing can replace the love of God. Amen. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. It doesn't matter how bad you mess up, how bad anything is in your life. God still loves you through it all. And um, it took me a while to realize that, um, you know, I had a lot of insecurities and everything. Even back when I was singing and God was opening the doors back when I was younger, there was a lot of insecurities and stuff still there. Anybody who was better than I am, you know, it was kind of a threat to me or I was jealous if I saw them being successful or anything. And, you know, out of all of that, all of that is gone now. God made me realize, you know, I understand I'm never going to be a Michael Lepper Smith. I'm never going to be a David Bell. But that's okay. Because God told me, he said, I got them covered. <laughs> he says, I have need of Jimmy Russell. <coughs> and you know what? God has need of you. He will be whatever you have dared to allow him to be in your lives. You know that? He will fill any empty void just like he did mine. And he will use you just like he does your pastor, just like he does me. He's no respecter of persons. You know, if you leave here today with nothing else, understand that the love and the grace and the mercies of God are more powerful than anything. His love is so powerful. And I, I, I used this, sorry, I used this illustration once before. You know, for those of you who are parents, think of your child. Now think of the nastiest, lowest person, disgusting person on this earth. Would you be willing to sacrifice your child for that person? That's God did for you. That's how big his love is, folks. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you know, that's why I'm here, is to share here. You know, this ain't about me. This ain't about me. Even though I share my testimony, it's not about, you know, me at all. When you leave here, I don't give a flip what you think about me. But, uh, actually, I do. I want you to like me. <laughs> but, but, it's about God. The more important thing is, it's about Jesus. And I want you to see and know Amen. I'm doing the number one here. This one was written by one of my favorite writers of all time, it's Scotty Rambo.